Today down in the comments, I want you to tell me your favorite modern horror film with a period setting. A horror film where the writers during the first 15 minutes don't have to have the characters go, there's no cell signal in here. What's your favorite one of those? Avast, me briny mateys, me saucy lasses. I'm Adam Caesar. This is Project Black T-Shirt, the channel where we talk about a new release horror movie and pair it with a piece of horror fiction that you will enjoy reading if you like that film. Make sure to like this video and subscribe for more. Today we're going to talk about Robert Eggers' uh, new film, The Lighthouse, which stars Robert Pattinson and Willem Dafoe. Does it hold up to his debut film, The Witch, which I think is one of the uh, best first films in recent memory? Yes, it definitely does. It's, uh, this isn't one of those reviews where I'm going to like play you six ads uh, for Progressive and then uh, not tell you what I think. I think this is a great film. The very first thing you notice about The Lighthouse, if you've seen any trailers, if you've seen any uh, promotional materials, is it has this really beautiful square framing, uh, black and white framing. I saw this in a, in a press screening, uh, somewhat small theater. But what I was overly impressed by uh, is, is how that kind of, just that, just the simplicity of like cutting off the sides of the frame uh, and forcing you to kind of lean in and give you this kind of weird tunnel vision really accentuates the overall feelings of dread, claustrophobia, and isolation uh, that this film is really all about. So it's Lighthouse is the very definition of like format, echoing theme, uh, and beautiful movie to look at. We begin the film uh, with the arrival of these two lighthouse keepers. Pattinson is kind of the new guy. He is, this is his first assignment uh, as a wiki, as a, uh, as a lighthouse keeper's kind of assistant. Uh, he doesn't get to tend the light at night. Defoe doesn't let him. Uh, and Defoe is the, the pro, this ex-sea captain, or so he claims, uh, who only talks about the glory days, um, who drinks uh, with every meal, even though it's against regulation. Pattinson's kind of this, uh, this loner, this uh, mysterious guy with a secret that we know. At the very beginning, uh, both of these guys have secrets, and, and the movie basically becomes, uh, as they're contending with slowly going crazy uh, in the isolation of this, of this small island that's got uh, seagulls, uh, the ever-present uh, drone of the, um, of the horn that warns ships away from the rocks, uh, and, you know, the occasional mermaid. So as they're dealing with these... Um, things that may may or may not be complete figments of their demented imaginations, um, they are contending with each other and they're trying to figure out each other's secrets. And there's this this crazy power dynamic between Defoe, who is uh, who really walks that line between boss from hell and like absolute complete sadist slave driver, and Pattinson, who uh, from the very beginning we're not given anyone's names. They're not they they don't call each other by names. It's just I, sir, and uh, Milad. Like, they'll talk to each other that way, and then slowly we get introduced to their names and their backstories. And it's, it's, it's weird to talk about a film where it's like, oh, well, the plot is like trying to, one big plot reveal is getting one character to tell another character's name. This isn't the kind of horror film that, believe me, I love. Uh, this isn't the kind of horror film uh, where it's it's steeped in gore, it's steeped in monsters, it's steeped in uh, jump scares. This is very much a uh, a psychological film. This is very much a film of where the 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 stuff that's going to stay with you long enough, uh, scary as it may be, is not going to be particularly frightening. James Wanian sequences. It's going to be um, certain images. Um, and certain ideas, and just the general, again, that drone of this film, that, 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 um, that seahorn that uh, Pattinson's character has to constantly be scouring the, the sea salt out of and things like that. It, it's a film about working a crappy job in a way. It's also a film about performance and the layers of performance that we all uh, kind of put on in everyday life to just to get through life. It's a film about a lot of different things, but it, 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 what struck me were those kinds of, those parallels. And, uh, and what's great about the movie is that it's, it's structured almost like a play. Uh, they do go outside the kind of uh, workhouse and where they live, but it just very, it feels very restricted. Um, and, and it's, there's these long sequences where they're having dinner and they, we revisit these setups later in the film as they're going crazier and crazier. Uh, there are long monologues, each, each actor gets 
kind of these long titanic monologues um and then we have moments where they're commenting on each other's performance that that seem to reach levels of of meta text because as uh i'm sure someone down in the comments will tell me um robert pattinson began his career in the twilight series of films the you know YA vampire adaptations. So did Kristen Stewart, but both of these actors have, have definitely moved on from those roles and have taken very interesting things. Pattinson um, worked with Cronenberg, he worked with Claire Denise, he's worked with the Softy Brothers. He's, he's clearly like an indie film go-to guy, go-to performer. Um, and this movie kind of talks about that. Like Defoe is, Defoe and Defoe's character is kind of preoccupied with how uh, handsome uh, Pattinson is, how soft he looks, how, 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 how much of like a girlish mane he has. Um, and that doesn't, that, that helps reinforce the fact that these are two dudes alone on an island dreaming about or in, encountering mermaids. Um, just this, this sense of isolation, the sense that you've got to be around uh, a, an older guy you don't know, a younger guy you don't know, and they're going to the bathroom uh, and they're doing, it's just, it's a movie that is uh, sweaty and, and drips with bodily functions. The food that they eat looks disgusting, which also comes up. Uh, it's, it, is a, it is a movie that is very experiential. You're sitting there and you're feeling a, a great level of like, wow, I do not know what it's like to be a turn of the century uh, lighthouse keeper. But now I feel like I do. Uh, it is it's one of those films that is, is um, down to the micro level, feels incredibly designed, uh, incredibly um, produced. Uh, but all those kinds of, all those, all those things that I'm seeing as a positive, I know some people will see as negatives. I know this isn't going to be a film for everyone. This is a, it's a film from A24. And, and regardless, when I post reviews of uh, A24 and films, you'll get the dude, well, this movie sucks. And I, and I, I understand it's, n it's not for everyone. Uh, but I will say as far as films that are, are more artistically minded, um, are kind of, uh, a little bit more you know, quote unquote, slower burns, what people will end up calling this. This isn't a movie that uh, ever drags or ever feels, um, like you're eating your vegetables. That's what's great about it. It feel it moves, uh, and it's compelling and dynamic from the first frame to the last. That's what's, it, it's just, it's such a miracle to me. It's a nearly two hour movie, hour 50 minutes, um, but the pacing never feels um, overly indulgent. The actors have both have such a weird intensity and they're both clearly playing at different frequencies, but they, they just never, it's always interesting and it's always kind of dreadful because there, there are these, these punctuated moments of, of violence and absurdity and comedy. It's actually a very funny film um, that, that, that if you're ever going to be lulled in by that that air horn that sea that sea horn uh, drone that Pattinson himself is kind of facing in the film, you're always kind of the audience is always kind of popped back up by these little punctuations of like whoa I did I didn't expect to see that kind of imagery or I didn't expect to see that thing happen right now, uh, and I'm and I'm speaking very vaguely because I do not want to spoil the film. It's it's one of those things where it's there are a few frames in the trailer that give away too much, that show you too much. Um, and it's not exactly, it's not a movie that, that hinges on any kind of surprise. There's no big um, Shyamalan-like twist that's going to recontextualize everything you just saw. Uh, the movie plays its cards pretty out in the open. Um, there is a good level of ambiguity, but I think the film will allow you to go either way uh, on, on, on certain uh, elements it presents. I highly recommend you go check it out. It's uh, it's a great film. And one of the things that struck me most about uh, The Lighthouse was uh, sitting in here in a theater in 2019, uh, feeling like I'm watching a classic film, feeling like I'm watching a film. Not that I'm saying it's like, oh, not that I'm saying this is movies, an instant classic or anything, not like one of those hyperbolic things, but feeling like this movie could have been made at any time uh, because it's, its themes and its setting seem so timeless. With this week's book recommendation, I wanted to go uh, with something a little bit more classic. Also, it's getting near uh, its getting near Halloween. We're one week away as of recording this. Uh, so this week, let's just go real classic. Let's recommend Ray Bradbury's The October Country. If you haven't read Bradbury, you've definitely seen some of the labors of his work because Something Wicked This Way Comes, uh, The Martian Chronicles, his, his work for 
the Twilight Zone uh, for a number of, uh, of adaptations. His work has been picked over and picked clean and ripped off and uh, readapted uh, every which way but Sunday. Uh, but go read uh, what many consider his finest collection. I actually don't. I actually I think I prefer the Martian Chronicle Chronicles because I used to teach it uh, to uh, high schoolers. Uh, but Ray Bradbury's The October Country, it's kind of perfect for the season. It kind of will get you in the mood. Uh, you'll enjoy it. As I said at the beginning, I'm Adam Caesar. I am a horror author. I write novels, novellas, comic books when they let me, and I have an exciting uh, comic book announcement coming soon. Uh, may even be out by the time this video is out. Uh, but if you'd like to check out my work, uh, find out more about me, my details are below, my website's below, and I want to thank every single person who has not only subscribed to the channel, which does help, uh, but who has picked up a book and reviewed it on Amazon and told their friends about it. Uh, it helps me out so much, and I really, really appreciate you um, enjoying the work. Uh, the new one, Clown in the Cornfield, uh, is out from Harper Teen, August 2020, and I will keep telling you about it until it comes out. And then when it comes out, I'll tell you about it again. Uh, but really looking forward to that. Thank you so much, and uh, I will see you next week where we'll talk about uh, not one, not two, but three films, a trilogy. Uh, and, of course, we'll do the book recommendation like we always do.